I'm gonna just kind of show you guys what I'm working on. Actually, I'll just show you what came off the dump truck and then I'll show you what I'm working on. First, I'm gonna show you the boat real quick. Check that out. We got all those gussets welded on, that plate welded on. That ain't never gonna break. There's also a plate on the inside of that. All right, let's walk over here to this other tailgate. So this tailgate came off of the International. It's a 2008. It makes it like 14 years old, roughly. You can see the tailgate was buckled. Totally buckled right there. It was rusting to pieces. I can almost push through that stuff, guys. Off. This is somebody else's repair. Over the original tailgate, they put, uh, you know, some metal on that, welded it in some places, but it was starting to crack. Just because, you know, this tailgate was just junk. Look at this. What's up, Joe? See how thin that is? That's the thing. That's the problem with these uh, t these tailgates that they make nowadays. Have an inside and an outside. They need to stop doing that. They just need to make the one side, and just make it strong, right? When you have the inside outside, the tailgate weighs so much. What they do to combat that is they make the metal thinner, and then it makes the tailgate thinner, right? right? So. What they're trying to do is they're trying to make it look better, longer, from the outside, but the inside is just getting hammered, right? If they just made it thicker, then, uh, you know, it would last longer and look better, in my opinion. Oh, everybody's good. Everybody's good. Okay. So that's from 2008. This is a 2020. Again... Look how thin this metal is. It's not even real square tubing. It's like a, you know, a C channel. And then they cut these big holes right in the middle of the frame, which was stupid. So let me just take you over here and show you the tailgate I've been building. I basically did the same thing as that one. I robbed the hinges off of it, took the lights off, took the latches off. Actually, that one, I didn't take the latches off. I made my own latches. But this one, the latches, I took them off. Oh my goodness, Morgan, you have no idea. Like, why can't people just build a product that lasts, you know? <laughs> why can't they just build something that lasts, you know? So... Anyways, we're probably going to be taking the boat out this week. My goal is, is uh, we got one truck working Monday, obviously, because I need to get this tailgate on and it wired. Boom, check that out. It's like some transformer crap right there. Well, and here's the thing, Morgan. Welding is not that hard. Like, it really isn't that hard. You can get a flux core welder from Home Depot for 500 bucks. Anybody can. You know, the cheap $500 one. And sure, you're going to have to do multiple passes. All you have to do is point that gun up there, get the gun in there, and just pull the trigger and shoot. 
and just drag it, you know. So this is the tailgate. There's my dog. He's looking for food if I dropped any. Four by four square tubing, quarter inch thick, then eighth inch thick steel plate. Just finished welding that up. That's 7018 welding rod. The other tailgate I did all with 60, 6011 or 6010 or something like that. So I kind of robbed this whole top part because here's why I did that, right? I could have just cut this stupid thing off, but it would kind of look, I don't know, it might look kind of funky. Actually, I might do that. I might do that. And then just weld like a little plate right there so I can get this attached to the front. Yeah, this gate, it's going to outlast the truck. You know, which realistically, that should be the way it is. And then see what I put for the chains? I just put some chain hooks on there. Easy peasy. Welded right to the square tubing. See, here's here's the thing. This has quarter inch thick right here. Quarter inch thick right here. Those up and down square tubings, they're not going to be compromised with these big old holes in them. Right? And they're four by four. You can easily put 25 tons of weight up against that and it is not going to bow that out with those four support beams going down like that it'll never bow it never never you know and this this is probably cheaper to build than that other thing they built <laughs> just in labor right they probably spent if they did something like this, they would probably spend $1,000 less in labor, you know, because they're not trying to cut out these stupid intricate parts that make it look strong instead of actually being strong, you know. So, I'm super excited about this tailgate actually though. Second tailgate I built for my business, you know. The thing, one of the reasons why I was thinking of keeping this is because sometimes rocks and stuff fall in the tailgate. And if it's square, they kind of sit on there. And it's kind of a pain, you know, because then the driver has to get out and try and sweep it off if he can. Yeah, you could use it to breach the castle. <laughs> so, I don't know. I got two options basically right now. I can either just cut this stupid thing off, which I'm, I might just do that. That would save me a lot of welding and some money because then I, because I was thinking of buying a plate to put over this. This little gap that they got there see their their tailgates rounded on the top it's hard to tell but if you look at that side and that side it's got a slight bow to it especially this part that might have just been because i cut it with a torch and it warmed it up and kind of bowed it a little bit but I basically went on the inside of the tailgate and just used the torch and could just cut straight across and use this as the, the thing. You just buy a new bed. Yeah. Not at the tune of $90,000, you wouldn't. Because that's how much a super dump bed costs. Too bad you can't rotate the top tube to a diamond orientation so no rocks can sit on it. Yeah. Well, and here's an easy fix, Morgan. I can just add a, 
you know, if I wanted to, I could just add a piece of angle iron. You know, some eighth inch thick angle iron. It doesn't even have to be eighth inch. It could be three, you know, three thirty seconds. Just a piece of angle iron. I might just do that. Get a piece from there to there. Weld it. And then weld it to this. Well, it's got to clear that. So if I have angle iron, it'd probably look like that. It'd probably clear it. It'd have to clear it on the inside, though. Because that bracket, you can see where the bracket goes. It'd have to go, you know. I could probably make that work. That'd probably be an easier... And it probably looked better too. That way I don't have to figure out how to sand that stupid red off and paint it. But there's a transformer tailgate right there. See, I mean, they can make it look cool still with making it strong that that's what they're probably just trying to do they're probably just like let's make this thing kind of unique so it's not just a, a super dull square tailgate like everybody else you know yeah convert my day cab to an end dump or a side dump uh if it were me i'd go side dump they're both kind of uh tricky markets you know if you're doing end dump you're gonna haul metal or you're gonna haul stumps and brush most likely at least in washington if you got a side dump you're gonna haul aggregate and you can still get away with hauling you know some stumps but you ain't gonna stack them as high but you can also haul boulders they're low they're lower to the ground so they're easier to load yeah, I'd go side dump if I were you. Make sure you get a good side dump frame because a lot of those earlier frames cracked. Yeah. yeah. He want the pull start I got from Grandpa. Yep, no problem. Yeah, one of the main reasons why I was going to keep this was so, you know, I could weld this part to here, but... And then I got it on there, and then there's this big gap, and I'm like, eh, I don't like it. Plus, if you think about it, when the tailgate is on the dump truck, it's already at a slight incline towards inside of the dump truck. So I might not even need to put an angle iron on there. No, I haven't lost any employees. So, both my employees are still working for me, as far as I know. <laughs> as far as I know, <laughs> unless they're quitting on me, you know. But, there's the tailgate. I got to have this done by Monday evening. At the rate I'm going, I, th I think I'll, I might have it done today. Oh, yeah, I think it's shrinking a little bit here, too, Morgan. You know, it works, you know, usually works a lot more. There's a lot more work. Like, I'm usually turning down, like, five. Uh, it seems like it's probably realistically, like, three people a day. By this time of year in June, I'd be turning down three people a day almost. You know, or at least twice twice to three times a week 
you know. So I would say work isn't as picked up as it normally is. So, yeah, we're still working here pretty good. I end up selling it for 7000 I sold it to a guy up near Port Townsend or something like that. He came down with a, with a, with a pickup and a, it had a flatbed on it. Seven thousand. I paid five. I put, you know, basically new tires all the way around it. They're not. They weren't brand new. I mean, they had been on there for you know probably a year or two, but they're still basically brand new. It only basically needed two tires, and like two of the deck boards were broken. Yeah, we're still doing excavating. Yeah, Blake, you got that right, man. <laughs> it's almost time to switch to that cherry flavor. <laughs> if the economy keeps going this way, a lot of people are going to be doing that. A lot of people are going to be doing that. They're going to be sipping that cherry, that cherry flavor. If the economy keeps going this way. Police officers are going to have to start dipping tanks again. I bet you they're already dipping tanks more often like back when trump was in they're like dip tanks Pfft, no we're not doing that nowadays they're like hey, hey well, pop that pop that cap open i'm gonna dip the tank you know so this is the back of the international i wanted to just kind of show you guys something real quick <clears throat> these super dumps damn near cheaper to pay the the fuel to the fine and the fuel tax. Yeah, almost. At this point, it is almost. I think it's like $10,000 fine. But man, you go a couple weeks with red, you'd be out ahead. <laughs> that almost rhymed. That, that rhymed a little bit. <laughs> but check this out, guys. Look at this floor. See how thin it is? It's like paper thin right there. They welded this uh, little bar across the bottom to keep it from totally just blowing out. But you can see somebody did an insert a while ago. This is before I bought it. You can see where it starts. But if you think about it, most of the wear in a dump truck bed is from the halfway mark back. Like the front doesn't get as much wear. This piece gets the most wear because this touches the most amount of material right here. And it gets progressively less as you go back. So while it looks super thin right here, it's probably quite a bit thicker, you know. The further you get that way, it's thicker. But. And another thing, like if you're looking at this. If you look at this tailgate, you can just see it comes down straight and then it's and then it cuts in and goes down. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but right about here it's angled down further. And that's because of the way the material wears it out more on the bottom. See, originally it was probably about out to here. quick silver liners yeah, I don't know but I'll tell you what I've really been thinking about getting liners for the dump trucks I really have been thinking about getting them because you know it's it, it's easier to replace plastic than it is metal you know what did you paint the new trailer yeah I painted it I thought I showed you guys that. But I guess I didn't. Okay, well, I'll just take a walk down there and show you guys the new trailer. Why don't you like service trucks? I'd like to have a service truck. I just don't really 
I can't really justify it, you know? It just doesn't make business sense. I don't have enough trucks. You know, if, if you have 20 trucks, then you can justify a service truck. That's why Justin got rid of his $200,000 service truck. Because he wasn't even using it. <laughs> you know? You really don't need a service truck, right? It's, it's cheaper... Unless you're going to get like a $10,000 service truck, it's cheaper to pay a mobile mechanic to come out and fix stuff every now and then rather than having a $50,000, a $60,000 investment just sitting there that only gets used, you know, a couple times, you know, a year. So I think, you know, <clears throat> the more trucks you, so eventually you get but, you know. All right, I'll take you over here and show you the trailer. That is a sexy gunmetal gray right there. Not too shabby. No, no bad man. It's just a, it's just a question. I was just explaining why I think. You know, that's too much in fuel when he did use it. So he didn't really save any money. It was really just costing him money. It was a monthly payment that he couldn't really justify having. The only bad thing, I did drop this off to have it worked on. And they shortened this. This is why I don't like mechanics. Because they don't really think sometimes. The guy shortened this to put the plug back on. And then it's too short because I went around a corner and it ripped it right off. It's in here somewhere. I know it is. I put it in here somewhere. Where is it? Unless one of the kids picked it up. <sighs> great, great. Now I got to buy another one of those because it's lost. Could have swore I had it just right up here. Yeah, the plug that goes to this. Oh, maybe it's still in the dump truck. In the Peterbilt. I'll go, I guess I'll go check. <laughs> I think I might have left it in there because they were supposed to... I called the mechanic up. I said, hey, man, just dropped my trailer off. You guys had it. You fixed the lights. And then I got back home, and I went to park it. I noticed the plug got ripped out of the thing because I went around a corner and it was too short. I think I left it in there because I was hoping they were going to come that day and fix it. Apparently they didn't make it out here. Yeah, the wheels need to get painted. That's definitely true. Let's see what we got here. Oh, nope. Not in there. Nope. Not in there. I mean, somebody picked it up. Oh yeah, it's not, it's metal. The wind isn't gonna blow it off. Yeah. <sighs> so, anyways, the, the title of this video is, you know, put some music on, right? So I wanted to talk to you guys, like, sometimes, like when you gotta get stuff done, what helps me is I just put some music on, put my earplugs in, I freaking crank that up to, you know, 20 million, and then I just start working, you know, and nothing else matters except for what I'm doing at this moment, you know, and uh, some of you guys, you know, that would benefit you a lot. If you're struggling with trying to get stuff done, trying to figure something out. Could that have gone? Well, I guess I'm buying another one. There goes 20 bucks or however much they cost. So, but yeah, put some music on guys and just get to it. I mean, especially if it's one of those things that you don't really want to do, but you just been trying to just Put it off a little bit, procrastinate a little bit, 
you know, like for me building that tailgate, <clears throat> I knew when I bought the truck, I was going to have to build a tailgate for that. I knew from the, from the day I bought it because I looked at it. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to have to get it real soon. That way, uh, that way if they come by to fix it, then I have one. So, but I just lost my train of thought. But anyways, if you're procrastinating you and you just want to get something done, put some music on. You know, building this tailgate was one of the things I just didn't want to do. And I was just like, I knew I had to do it. Yeah. Well, this is the first time I've ever had one rip in five years. So, I mean, it's not like I, go, I don't go through them every day. <laughs> Knock on wood, you know. If I had 10 trucks or 10 trailers, then yeah, that's definitely something I'd keep on hand. You know, but we don't use trailers that often. But we got the tailgate almost done, Paul. Almost done. Looking pretty good. I haven't done the lights yet. And I haven't wired it. But... Tomorrow for sure, it'll be done tomorrow. Ready for Tuesday. There it is, right there. And I didn't take those uh, chain hooks. I didn't take the chain things off of the other one. I just welded new chain hooks on it, just like that. Those will be easier to use instead of being all the way up here you have to pull the chain up and around it'll just be bloop right there oh i'd love to i'd like to do it it's just one of those things you know you never know if you're going to get to it or not mason what do you think of the tailgate yeah it's good looking huh yeah that's what i thought mason approved we got the latches right there. I'm going to reuse those. I got to I got to grind all this crap off. It's left on there from the old tailgate. It's all just garbage. Cut that off. But there she is right there. I'm also going to do so a piece of metal like this cover that that way you know stuff doesn't sit on there same with the bottom one i finally got one put on brandon's but yeah you know, there she is so I'll show you the way the hinges are. Got a couple passes on there. That's ex that is so true, Morgan. <laughs> I see the paint on them for about an hour, and then when they get back to the yard, dirt. Yeah, I probably did like almost six passes on the outside, probably like two on the inside same with that side it'll it'll never break there's no way i mean you'd have to pull that thing with the tank or something to break it i built it so you can slam the hell out of it <laughs> and not worry about it just got two trucks running full time the other truck i i took it off the insurance and it's just been sitting there. Haven't really used it. I don't really plan on using it. Maybe a little bit of on-site stuff here or, or selling it. Somebody wants to buy it.
when you got something like this, guys, here's the, here's the best way to tackle something like this, especially if you've never done it. This is the best way to tackle something. Just do a quick little sketch. You do a sketch, you start doing your measurements, you make a product list. Right? Uh, I don't really drive that much anymore. I drive every now and then. I'm more of a fill-in. Yeah. Hey, check this out. Here's the other one. The other tailgate I built. I just drew it out. You don't need no computer-aided design program or anything like that. You need a tape measure, a piece of paper, and a pencil. That's it. That is how simple that is. Yep. That's it right there. That's the tailgate for the Peterbilt. All it takes, guys, is put your music on and get to work. Put your music on. Put it on full blast. That way nobody bothers you, too. That's what I always do. Nobody bothers me when my music's on full blast and I got earplugs in. They just figure, oh, I'll just tell them later. <laughs> I'll just bother him. I'll bother him later. Right, honey? Nope. I bug him. No, she says she still <laughs> bugs me. I don't think so. All the time. What do you think, Mason? You like bugging me? Yeah, a little bit. Oh. So, anyways, guys, I'll catch you later on the next one. I just wanted to pop in and do a little live stream. It's been a long time since I did a video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed that Why I Love Dump Trucking videos. And, uh, you know, I put some work into that video, uh, you know. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. I thought it was a pretty cool video. I didn't really edit it. I just pretty much just shot it straight time and then just posted it the way it was because uh, I thought it was all pretty good content, you know, pretty good information. So, the Rock Crusher is still not here. It is still not here, guys. It is still in the Port of Seattle. Waiting for customs to approve the thing to uh, get out. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to get a roller anytime soon. I was thinking about it, but the more I think about it, how do you do family compared to business? I don't, I'm not understanding your question. Rephrase it for me. Yeah, you're going to have all three trucks? That's good, man. <clears throat> That's good. That's good. Yeah, I feel like with two trucks, I'm going pretty good. I want to have at least five, you know, but it's just a work in progress. You know, you can't just have everything in one day. You know, plus I like to spend my money on toys and enjoy life a little bit too, you know. I'll tell you what though, this past year I've spent like at least 200% more with my family than I did last year. Or the year before that was like probably 300% more. You know, I've been spending... Ton, like I went fishing with my son probably like almost every other day for the past month. <laughs> we've, we've, we've slain the, tr the rainbow trout. They know my son's name now, <laughs> you know. So it's pretty cool. You know, it's been super fun getting out there and with him and my grandpa, spending time with him. Oh, let me show you this too. My grandpa... 
Well, the main reason is, Joe, is I'm not driving it anymore, and none of my drivers want to drive it. You know, which I can't really say I blame them. They're both bigger guys, and it's a really small cab, and it's an old truck that'll beat you to heck. Check this out. My grandpa is in love with this backhoe, and he is so stubborn, he wants me to fix this thing. And uh, he's been dreaming about a headache rack for this thing for like as long as i can remember he's like we need to get a headache rack on that thing that way if a tree falls it doesn't kill us you know my grandpa we don't even use the backhoe that much yes but we're going to and i'm like okay whatever grandpa <laughs> if you're watching this grandpa i love you but he knows my he knows my opinion on it but anyways i finally just decided okay let's do it grandpa let's put something on it and so we built this, basically. Basically, it's just it's just some C channel, right? Welded it right to the frame. Welded the C channel to the other ones, and then put the one on the back. It's very strong. Like I can hang on this, and it doesn't even move. What I see the weakest point being of this is right there. I mean, you have something really heavy hit that; it'll probably just bend it right there on both sides but it'll do it'll do what we want it'll keep the rain off you and uh you know if a limb falls you'll be safe and he's all he also wants to put some limb risers on here <laughs> so we're gonna put some eye loops right here and run some cable up to the top that way when you're going through the little limbs and stuff they hit the cable and they just rise up over yeah a little gusset yeah, exactly, but in all honesty, this thing, I mean, it's plenty strong. I mean, we don't expect to roll this thing over. It doesn't get used that often, you know. It just it pretty much is just going to sit in front of my gate. My grandpa thinks the family wants to use it, but they really, I don't really think they do. I mean, they don't even know how to start the thing. The thing just leaks so much fluid, it's... You know, look, it's just been sitting here. It's probably leaked four gallons of fluid out of the rear differential since it's been sitting here. I mean, I had to clean up the mess because I came out. I, I noticed it was dripping, so I put that under there, went to sleep, came back out, and it had rained and it was dripping, and it was freaking everywhere. And then I, that thing was full. I dumped it out into that. And then put it back under there, and look, it's already half full again. So, I mean, I honestly don't know how much more can leak out of this thing. But <laughs> it just never stops leaking. But that's the old backhoe. Look at this thing. Look at these tires. Look. Would you want to use this? That tire looks like it's getting pretty low. Power steering's kind of funky on it. You know? Basically, me and Grandpa are the only ones that know how to start this thing. Nobody else is really willing to learn. You know? But, honestly, I think it's a yarn ornament, but Grandpa just wants to keep using it. But, I'm sure we'll get a little more use out of it when the Rock Crusher gets here. Yeah, <laughs> those aren't nipples. <laughs> those are not the, those are not rubber nipples, Blake. That was string. That was the strings coming out of the tire. <laughs> but I figure we'll use it when the rock crusher gets here. Maybe load the rock crusher or moving uh, piles. Maybe if an excavator is busy or something. Yeah, it all. This, and what amazes me is this thing starts right up. But look at this. It's got this massive crack in the block. Look at that. It's cracked right along there. My grandpa just put sodium silicate in there. 
and he just keeps running it the way it is with a cracked block. It's cast iron. I haven't welded it up because I've never, you know, I'm not really good at welding cast iron for one. For two, you got to preheat that stuff, and this does not look like a good situation to be preheating with all the oil everywhere. And uh, number two, you know, probably wouldn't even hold if we did. But, yeah, this thing still fires up like it's brand new. Oh, yeah, Blake. I got a couple, and, uh, you know, I got a couple of those. I'm just not very good. Yeah, this is a Case 530. Case 530 backhoe. That's exactly what this is, Farmer Tom. This is a Case 530. My grandpa bought it, shoot, he bought it more than 15 years ago for 1500 bucks. We have the backhoe part, it's just, it's parked way up there. It's kind of a yarn ornament. It's cracked to heck. I mean, this thing's been welded and cracked and welded and cracked. Like, I mean, it's got... <laughs> Am I? Here's the other thing. Like, look at these hoses. And my grandpa still insists that it will do anything that he wants it to do. Yeah, we don't run this without fluid. We just fill it with water usually. Except for, you know, in the winter time. Make sure it's got coolant that'll withstand a freeze. It's usually only leaking when it's running. You know, it'll do a couple drips here and there. But when it's running, it drips a little bit more. <coughs> but it's a diesel. Blake, it is a diesel. I mean, this thing is, it's just so cool. Like, it really is just a cool tractor. But it needs about $2,000 worth of hoses. You know, all the pins are kind of wore out. Not a whole lot, not too bad. But, you know, the hoses are shot. The crack in the block, the the one of the power steering cylinders leaks a little bit. Because when you're driving down the road, it wants to steer constantly to one side. So you got to constantly steer it. The tie rod's bent. Yeah. Yeah, they're just barely broke in, right? They're going to rust through before they, br before they blow. Look at this. You can't even see the braided line anymore. It's so rusted. You can't even tell it's supposed to be braided. Like this one, you can at least tell it used to be braided wire. This one, you can't even tell it anymore. It's rusted so much. But, you know... Yeah, I don't have that kind of money. Well, I do, but I'm not going to spend it on that. That's not really what I'm interested in spending my money on. I love it, though. I love that. And here's another reason. You know, I just love this patinaed machine, you know. You get to look at it the way that we the way that we used it if i restored this nobody would know what it looked like when we were using it nobody would know what we went through but if they look at it the way it is they're like oh that thing's seen some days that thing's got some stories but if you restore it they think oh man that was just a barn find or something oh i'm sure it could be done i'm sure you could find the parts for it but
you know. I I just love the look of the way it looks now. Like I wouldn't if if you restore it, sure it would look cool, but to me it wouldn't look any cooler than it is, it does now. Yeah, it's earned those battle scars. Exactly, Blake. I mean, that thing I think it's done some work down here. Let me tell you what. That's the first piece of equipment I ever ran. And I was like probably 10, 12 years old. Cleared my first road when I was 10, 12 years old with that thing. Just pushing over small little alder trees. And I remember I got hung up. And Grandpa's like, oh, don't don't worry, son. Or don't worry, you know, just... Just flip around and use the backhoe and pull yourself off of it. I'm like, what? You can do that? He's like, yeah, just flip around and use the backhoe and just, you know, just pull yourself off the logs. And did that, and we kept going. Grandpa never forget that. He, he always brings that story up. It's like one of, the, one of the stories he always remembers about the backhoe. You know, some people, when they... Something jogs their memory in the first story that comes up. That's the story. You know. That and everybody getting in the bucket and driving down the road. <laughs> this thing don't even have brakes that work that good. But we were all in the bucket sitting 20 feet in the air. As grandpa's driving down the logging road. So. Oh, dude, Blake, you have no idea how good this concrete has been to me. <laughs> this concrete, this was well worth it. Yo, it's not for sale. Sorry. <laughs> Definitely not for sale. And it's not even mine to sell. It's my grandpa's still. So when he gives it to me or gives it to the family or whoever, you know, it's not going to get sold. It, that's going to be in our family probably a couple generations. It'll probably just rust in the ground. You know, I don't think anybody would ever, you know, even recycle the thing. So. Yeah. Oh, I believe it. I mean, it's one of those stories that he brings up every time he... He's talking about it. He's like, hey, you remember that time you got stuck, Brian, and I told you to flip around and pull yourself off with the hoe? No, it's not. It's a perfect size. Four foot. Four foot clean out. Dude, you got to get one of those for yours. Dude, that is the, the most used bucket I've, I have on that machine by far. I've used it so much, Blake. It needs a new floor. That thing needs a new floor. I've used it so much. Which I'm going to do pretty soon. Well, mine's a 50. And it handles that. It handles that perfect. Like this is the perfect muck bucket or clean out bucket. You know. You got to be careful though when you're when you got a heavy like if you're doing mud or something and you're swinging out it'll want to tip so you got to know you know the limits of the machine you know but it it literally is the perfect size Dude trust me dude it I would not want a smaller bucket than that for a clean out I'd probably like to get a five-foot bucket for my 120. Oh man, could I do some work with that? If I had a, if I had a quick change on that, oh, I would do that in a heartbeat. But dude, yeah, you gotta get. Oh, dude, definitely. Even, even with this, it doesn't take. I mean, it takes quite a while to load a super dump, but a normal truck, it don't take that long. I mean, it. You're talking maybe five minutes, maybe six or seven at the most, you know, probably about 10 to 15 scoops or something like that.
Yeah, it's just a drain. <laughs> That's why I haven't changed it yet, because it's been useful. It's got its own little drain, so it doesn't hold water anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just haven't bought the metal for it yet. Of course, I think I do have some metal I might use. It's the perfect thickness. It's quarter inch thick. I think that's all you would need for that bottom. Dude, you need to get one, man. I got this metal, but I was going to use this for the hopper for the rock crawler, but thing seems like it's never going to get here. But that piece right there is probably the perfect length or width. Now I just got to cut it to the right length and boom, that, that could be the floor of the bucket right there. I might do that. But got to wait till we get the rock crusher here first. And then I got to build a hopper. And then if I have any left over, then we'll see. So anyways, guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to go finish my dinner. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, catching this episode on the live stream. Uh, have I shown you guys around the boat? I think I've shown you around the boat already. Dude, I freaking love that boat, man. Dude, we're going to be spending a lot of time this summer on that thing. And here's the nice thing. The, one of the coolest things about it, I was, I was talking about taking my drivers out on a, like a, a charter and stuff. And I was like, man, if we just had our own boat, we could do that. It wouldn't cost as much. And we could literally go out anytime we want. We wouldn't even have to schedule it with somebody. We could just schedule it ourselves, you know. So I'm pretty stoked about having, you know, some employee trips pretty soon. You know, that's one thing I really want to get going. You know, I know they got their lives and stuff, but we can at least plan, you know, maybe once, at least once, maybe twice, three times a year doing something in the boat, you know, because I know, I know Brandon loves to fish. Paul doesn't have his license yet, but I think he does too. So hopefully we get to have some fun out there and get some fish on the line. <sighs> yeah, we're going to have some fun, man. I'm telling you. See, that's the, that's one of the coolest things about running a business is you get to buy these toys for the business and you get to use them, you know, for yourself too. You know, obviously I bought that personal that the business didn't buy that, but I get to use it for the business and for my personal stuff, you know, so maybe take some customers out fishing once we get it, once I get it dialed in and I know exactly what I'm doing, you know, and we'll. We'll get out there. I actually had grandma and grandpa on the boat two days ago. And we, me and Brian had our lines in. And I was driving the boat, right? And, or not, was it driving? or What's it called when you're maneuvering the boat? I think it's just driving. Um, I was in control of the boat. And uh, grandma's like, oh, I think you got a fish on. So I, I'm like, here, grab the wheel. You know, somebody grabbed the wheel. Grandpa hopped back there and started steering the boat. And sure enough, had a fish on. Grandma was the first one to notice it. You know, she's, and she's always like, my dad always tried to make me a fisherman. <laughs> We'd go out every weekend and we'd be fishing, you know. And grandma would always be like, we'd be going every Friday night. We'd be catfishing or something. She always said catfish, but I've never caught any catfish. And I haven't heard of any catfish being in the lakes around here. So I'm wondering if she's getting that mixed up with bass fishing or trout fishing. I don't know. But she always seems to think it was catfish. But yeah, that boat right there, man. We're going to get that out a lot this year. So the horn didn't work on it. I fixed the horn. I took it apart. It was There's little points in there that's like electromagnet. They were uh, rusted together. Took some sandpaper, <laughs> fixed that problem. The windshield wiper though, I took the motor apart. As soon as I took the cover off, it was like, there was like a half a cup of pure rust water in it. So gonna have to buy a new windshield wiper motor for that. The bilge pump works. I just had to tap it against something that, you know, been sitting too long. So, but yep, yep. Looking forward to getting that out there. 
looking forward to getting it out so we're gonna have to schedule something with the drivers pretty soon you know schedule a weekend out you know it's one of those things you got to kind of like say hey next month this saturday let's go you know so anyways i'll catch you guys later thanks for tuning in thanks for watching and uh don't forget to check out the playlist and check out all the other content we got on the channel and uh i'll catch you guys on the next 